Should Amazon get into the food delivery business? Hey everyone, welcome back to another product management mock interview. Today, we're going to be doing a product strategy question, and we're going to be doing this with Yanel. Here is the question, the product strategy question that I would like to ask you today, Yanel. Should Amazon get into the food delivery business? Okay. So I'm just going to jot that down. Okay. And um, just a few clarifying questions. Um, is this, should I focus on globally get involved in the food delivery uh, service or would you prefer more of a domestic angle on this? Um, is there a reason why you think uh, Amazon might choose one or the other? Yeah, I think actually because of um, the reason I ask it is because of uh, regulation and, you know, with in the U.S. with Amazon being everywhere, uh, there may be, I imagine, some scrutiny in this. So I guess it can, you know, it doesn't completely deter them from going into it, but it would probably like I would have to think uh, about like the challenges globally versus domestically, what they would face from a regulatory angle. Got it. Okay. Um, let's say that Amazon is more familiar with the logistics and how um, deliveries work in the U.S. That's Amazon's bread and butter. So for, for this exercise, let's say that for an MVP, Amazon's going to focus within the U.S. And we'd love to hear a recommendation from you there. Sure. Okay. And should I make an assumption that yeah, I'm a PM at Amazon and presenting this to VP of e-commerce and they want to know what take should we take, what um, action should we take basically um, in moving forward in this decision? Yeah. So, yeah. So like leadership, someone from the S team wants to know whether the delivery, this food, food delivery business is something that the company should explore. Sure. Okay. Okay, I'm just going to take um, a few, uh, maybe two minutes or so just to jot down um, a bit of the kind of uh, strengths and weaknesses of, of Amazon, a little bit of like the landscape um, and a bit of like the challenges to just set forward basically um, uh, what I think would be needed to make the right action for this. So I'm just going to jot some notes down uh, for a little bit. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I think that sounds good. Strengths, weaknesses, general landscape and on uh, opportunities. This sounds good. Yeah. Okay. So a few of the things um, that I jotted down, I first looked at Amazon as a company and thought about like the strengths, the weaknesses um, of that, of the company. So obviously it's an e-commerce giant. It has a fulfillment network, um, both, you know, for long distance as well as the last mile for, and for this specific food delivery business, um, last mile is super important. Um, and then I thought also about, um, then I thought a little bit about the competition um, within the company or within the space, sorry, I should say. So Uber Eats, DoorDash, um, Grubhub. So it's, a, it's definitely a, a crowded space um, within the food delivery business. Then, then I thought about also uh, the customers. Um, so I thought about Amazon customers first and you know, Amazon customers are trained for ordering, right? They know how to go online and, and make an order. So um, that's an interesting thing to basically food delivery uh, customers because they're also trained on kind of making the orders as well. So then I thought about like the demographics and they kind of tie in together, right? It's usually like young adults to older adult that are making these orders. Um, so that was like an in interesting synergy there. And then I thought about the landscape a bit um, and it's 
a lower margin business, um, uh, the food delivery business, which Amazon, you know, tends to work well um, in lower margin business because a lot of the um, e-commerce space, uh, there's a significant amount of categories that are running on low margins or zero margins or negative margins, actually. So, um, so I thought that was an interesting, uh, that was an interesting kind of synergy that's there. Um, and then I also thought about, um, I also thought about like the challenges and we mentioned that earlier with one of my um, clarifying questions, you know, with Amazon in dominating the e-commerce space and in various different businesses from prime video um, to a lot of different categories in e-commerce um, and with fulfillment as well. Um, I think there's definitely going to be some scrutiny on getting into uh, another space, right? So I think there'll be less scrutiny if Amazon does it on its own, but you know, if they were going to possibly make an acquisition, then I thought of like, there could be some scrutiny there uh, because these, these companies are smaller. So um, that I see that as potentially as a possible thing that could be done. So, so these are some of the things that I thought about when thinking about whether to go into the space. Um, the next step that I'd like to do is just distill this a little bit and think about um, what sort of paths that we could take and what sort of risks would be there in, in doing each one. So I'll pause there before, um, before I continue any further, but that's, that's kind of my thought process um, uh, right now. Yeah, thanks for laying out the landscape there. Um, and before we start looking into possible routes to get to food delivery, I'm curious, like while you were looking through the, the strengths and the weaknesses and the opportunities there and uh, the, the threats there, um, was there anything in particular you were looking for? Yeah. Um, for the opportunities, I'll start with there. I was looking for synergies between the food delivery business and Amazon. So what Amazon does well, so I alluded, alluded to that a little bit of like, okay, the customers are gonna be similar. So there's a, probably a similar customer base. If you're most likely ordering um, on a food delivery service, you're probably, or could be an Amazon uh, Prime customer. Not oh, probably, we'd have to do that analysis, but I imagine uh, I'll make the assumption that there's probably some synergies there. Um, and then, and then the opportunity there, if they weren't a prime member customer, I thought, you know, Amazon, the biggest thing that they try to drive that whole customer flywheel is getting more people to buy more services, right? And through the prime membership, if they're able to get someone to become a prime member, then it's an interesting opportunity, like if food delivery uh, service customers can be converted into prime customers. So that's where I was thinking of like the opportunities there. And yeah, and as I mentioned, um, the strengths that I thought is because it's an e-commerce, you know, obviously the e-commerce giant and dominant in the fulfillment network as well and shipping, um, I thought that could play well into giving some more efficiencies to the food delivery business. Um, so I thought there could be um, an ability there for Amazon to use his expertise in uh, fulfillment to basically apply it to the food delivery service. Um, and then I think the, maybe the, the kind of threat or uh, maybe not so much threat, but like a risk is like it is another low margin business, um, which, you know, it's it's debatable whether you want to go into a low margin business again. Um, and then I think like I don't see I didn't see any like threat from an outside 
company. Uh, but I mean, the food delivery services for them to kind of grow past the last mile, it's a big challenge for them to, to go outside of like that niche. So, so I didn't see any major like threats for, for Amazon and like any of the competition that's working on this. Um, but yeah, that was a little bit of uh, my thought process as I went through kind of the company, the competition, the customers, uh, the climate or landscape and like the challenges that um, that are there for them. I see. So you were looking at where food delivery might fit into the Amazon flywheel and you were thinking just playing a little bit of a devil's advocate, right? Like why sh Amazon shouldn't get into the business. Um, so you've laid out this landscape and it sounds like you you might have some scenarios in mind, right? So um, let's let's move there. I, I would love to hear what some of these scenarios might be for Amazon to get into food delivery, if that's the recommendation you're making. Sure, sure. I'm just gonna take out uh, take some time just to lay out these options, and also think about the risks and trade offs that would be made in each of these options. Perfect. And I, I would also love to know what sort of criteria is needed in order for um, for us to be eligible for each one of these scenarios. Sure. Meaning, uh, just to clarify, like what um, what criteria I would look at for us to move forward with one of these uh, options? Yeah. So, for example, yeah, exactly. Like, what are the requirements for us to choose scenario A or over scenario B? Like, what has to be um, present? Sure. So. Okay, I think I, I split it up basically into two options here that I thought about. Um, and basically those two options are either build our own service, like um, food delivery service, or two, buy a competitor that's in the food delivery service um, as two options that we could consider. And each of them has their uh, pros and cons. And when I lay these two options out, starting with the build our own food delivery service, I think the UI, we basically add on another category of like food delivery, which I think is, could be pretty easy for Amazon. It's not, it's not a huge um, upfront cost to, um, in the grand scheme of things, um, to basically add on a new category of of restaurants that you could order from for the customer. Uh, I think the challenge would be more of connecting the restaurants to the Amazon service, right? So uh, plugging in uh, the Amazon, let's say ordering system to restaurants around the country. So I think that will be a bit more of a, require more of a deployment by the Amazon team to, to reach the right restaurants. And then the delivery, I think there, um, there could be, there could be a, an ability to kind of leverage the existing last mile network that's there. And I mean, typically this is contracted out to delivery companies and, you know, this could be an additional kind of, um, service uh, that's provided for the delivery company that's contracted out. And at times, you know, Amazon does have its own fleet as well. So I think it's a combo of thinking about what's the best way to move forward with that. Um, and then on the buy option, I think the tricky thing... So let me pause here for a second. Um, so it sounds like, sounds like for, for the build option, um... We'll have full control over the experience. We'll be able to give the customer like a very delightful experience there. Um, there's a chance. There's a chance we might, might be able to tap into our own in-house fleet of drivers, right? So maybe that will help improve our margins. Um, but we also have a rich um, like source of third-party contractors that we've historically also worked with. So that's also another option. Um, and I. I think what I would add too is um, mm -hmm. I think the interesting piece here is what I mentioned, uh, alluded to a little bit before of like prime members. Now, you know, you could join 
you could be an Amazon customer and not be a Prime member. And um, so I think what this could help drive is maybe thinking about how Prime can be a distinguishing factor for using this food delivery service, right? If you say, hey, you get further discounts on like shipping, then um, this could be an interesting kind of um, way to get more Prime members because Prime members typically are buying more um, items within the e-commerce catalog. So, so I think that's an interesting I think that that could work for the build and, you know, there's kind of a different way as well in the, in the buy option as well. I see. Yeah, uh, I can definitely see how prime subscriptions are very important, especially, I mean, just as a subscription, right? This is recurring revenue that Amazon's going to get. And there's, there's studies done that show that people who have prime memberships do spend more. So that also Im impacts the bottom line for Amazon. Um, and I, yeah, like Uber, DoorDash, all these other um, food delivery apps, they, they also have subscriptions where you can get like free delivery or some, or some, some stuff like that. So um, definitely gels, gels well with the flywheel that Amazon's building. Um, what are the risks that um, are present if Amazon were to in-house build their own food delivery network? Yeah. So... I thought about this and with it being a low margin business and I think what we would have to kind of see if if we build all of this out and um, as I mentioned before when you know this would be something of like some analysis we would need to do um, if we build this out and we find that like, okay, everyone that's ordering is already a prime member. Like there is no net benefit of like getting these customers onto prime and it's a low margin business, or it could be even like a, um, a negative margin business here. Like then I could see that as a risk of just launching you know, another, it's basically another low margin category, right? So, and if all those customers are already prime members, like it's not pushing the needle on that flywheel that we want to pursue, right? So, so I think this could be, um, this could be a risk of just kind of spending, spending money on a business that like we have already acquired those customers as prime members. Um, so I see that as, potentially a risk. I could also see a risk of restaurants, you know, they're already plugged into a lot of these as well, right? Like you go to any restaurant and you'd see like Grubhub, you'd see DoorDash, you'd see Uber Eats, like all these restaurants are already inundated with a lot of like ordering systems that they have to work with. So to kind of go in and ask a restaurant, hey, can you put a, a fourth or fifth ordering system in? I could see pushback on that where you may not get like the restaurants that you need, right? If like, you know, the most popular restaurants already are plugged in. And if you as a customer can't find that restaurant working with Amazon, then I could see that as a fail. Like if you don't get the, the big population of restaurants to use this, then I could see that as a big, um, a big fail in this service. So those are the two that come to mind, actually. Yeah, that's interesting. And there, there's probably ways that we can mitigate this, and we can probably talk about this later on. But one, um, just just for the sake of time, I just wanted to call out just as a maybe brainstorming partner. One could be finding just underserved areas in the U.S. where there aren't many Prime members, and also Uber and DoorDash haven't explicitly penetrated yet. Um, and maybe maybe like those are places where e even if this is a low margin business, just the fact that Amazon has um, allowed food delivery there or, or is driving food delivery there, that might be a, a good place for Amazon to enter. And also just uh, even if Amazon is, is losing a little bit of money here as a low margin business, maybe this is just a loss leader for us to get more prime members. 
Um, but I, I, I'd love to move on and, and hear your other routes, which is, I think you mentioned buying, buying another service, right? Yeah, actually, like the point that you just hit on of like, um, of areas that haven't been penetrated. Um, so, you know, knowing a little bit of the space of like Uber Eats, DoorDash, Grubhub, I believe, you know, they've also tackled different regions within the United States. And I thought about in a similar angle, it's like, okay, well, if you purchase one of um, these competitors and you picked a location that Amazon does not have strong prime members uh, in, and that's typically more in like the rural areas outside the cities. Mm -hmm. And then when I think about, you know, some of these competitors, I believe like Uber Eats, Postmates, they were more in like a city concentration. And I believe either DoorDash or Grubhub, we'd have to look at exactly which one, but I believe they had more of outside some of the big cities. Yeah. Which I think, I think could play, uh, yeah, yeah, could play well exactly. from the prime membership angle. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think Uber started out in, in cities like New York City or downtown areas. And I think DoorDash was the one that started all, all, off in suburbs. And I, if, I, if I recall correctly, I think Uber Eats started off with large chain restaurants and DoorDash started off with like mom and pop, sort of like small businesses in suburbs. Um, so, so, so what you're proposing here is expanding into rural underserved areas where Do DoorDash and Uber haven't penetrated yet in the U.S. Um, and perhaps leveraging our existing fleet of drivers perhaps um, or or are you thinking of other ways to um, sort of bring in Amazon's strengths when we do buy another service in an underserved area yeah I think that one um, that one we'd leverage we'd want to leverage the Amazon uh, fulfillment network to basically uh, and delivery service basically to um, go to those um, rural areas to basically um to basically get yeah more customers that wouldn't necessarily order from amazon uh from before and but now you know this service is available to them and if they join as a prime member they can maybe have a reduction in like you know typically as a prime member you don't get charged for uh delivery service so so i think that could then spark a way for getting getting those customers to order on amazon and then introducing them to um different deals and different categories that they could then shop from so so i thought yeah like if they targeted let's say doordash as we said is maybe more concentrated outside the um the city locations then that could be an interesting play for them i think you know um Anytime you're making a purchase, you always have to think about the culture of the firm as well. Um, so Amazon has like a unique culture that needs to mesh well with the um, with the company that they're buying. I think overall, my sense is that a lot of these companies, they do run in a scrappy way. And Amazon is kind of known to be frugal and um, they kind of do more with less. So I don't see that as a major um major problem but i think you know if because there are a few of them i think it's it's a mix of culture it's a mix of probably more importantly of like which area are they operating in and um that could complement um the non-prime members that we could bring on i think as i mentioned the challenge here too is uh regulation and like maybe monopoly issues that could come up if like Amazon is just going in and purchasing one of these, the space that's has healthy competition. Um, I could see that getting a lot of scrutiny. So I think for this one that that I would call out as the biggest obstacle. Um, so unless like, we're willing as Amazon to take on that legal risk, I would probably um steer away from this one but if we were to kind of go ahead but i guess there's there's ways to mitigate it as well if you purchase like you know the number two or number three uh operator in the space will probably get less scrutiny um 
So I think there, there's ways to mitigate that, but it's definitely something that needs to be considered when making, uh, making this choice. So, right. so it sounds like, like because of these antitrust issues, you're leaning more towards building. Is that right? Yeah, I'm leaning more towards building, I guess. Yeah, I'm leaning more towards building because I think we could leverage a lot of what we already have at Amazon. Um, and it's a category that we can we can easily put in in the existing ecosystem and build out over time. Uh, so it doesn't have to be like something that um, you know, it's going to take time to connect with um, with the with the restaurants. But I think there could be ways of making it you know, with the margins so thin, maybe it'll be more appealing to work, to go to restaurants and say, because Amazon is capable of withstanding these low margins versus a standalone food delivery service. I think they could actually, they could actually get more restaurants if they share more of the margins with the restaurants, right? Um, and then we could strategically we could strategically target areas that we know may not be uh, an area where prime members are. And this could be a foot in you know, the door to get some of those food delivery customers to convert into prime. So I would lean towards um, building our own service and growing it out slowly with some of the things I mentioned of um, it'll probably be a loss um, business, but it could convert a lot of new um a lot of new customers to prime members and then i think what's interesting because amazon is so big in the e-commerce space like you know if you join up if you're a restaurant and you join up as um a restaurant that will use our ordering system like there's also amazon business that's the b2b platform that amazon has and that basically allows places like restaurants or businesses to order things in bulk. And, you know, like, so Amazon can basically attract restaurants. And that was one of the risks that I called out, but they're able, they can be able to attract restaurants by providing different incentives that uh, would have them join the network. Cool. So just to summarize what I'm hearing here, um, you're recommending that Amazon does get into the food delivery business. Um, you're recommending that Amazon builds their own platform. And I think this is mainly for three reasons. One is that we can find, we can use this as a way to um, offer customers free delivery if they have a prime membership. And we can use this as a way to drive prime memberships like overall. And it's been shown that customers who have prime, prime memberships do purchase more on Amazon overall. Um, I think the second reason was that we already have a healthy network of fulfillment drivers who whom we can leverage to deliver the food um, and food delivery basically is a three-sided network uh, marketplace right you have all people ordering food the restaurants and also people delivering food so we've already taken care of one side of the marketplace by by leveraging our our drivers and then it sounds like what you just mentioned the um the supply side of the marketplace which is going to be the, the businesses the restaurants um, we're going to be able to um, make sure that they're successful on the network by leveraging Amazon business or Amazon's B2B arm. So it sounds like, like these are going to be the three reasons you're going to give the leadership team as to why Amazon should get into the food delivery business. Is that right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's, uh, that would be my recommendation um, to leadership on this. Okay, cool. Uh, well, thanks so much. Um, just looking at the time here, um, I do have one just quick follow-up question. Um, thanks for the, the awesome mock interview. Um, I'm sure the audience learned a lot from these, this product strategy question. And um, I would just love to learn, um, you know, taking off our interview hats, just as someone who recently transitioned from Amazon to Google, you know, two of the largest companies, most applied to product companies, um, in, at least here in the US and probably all around the world. Um, what maybe like just pick one of the largest differences that you've seen um, working at Amazon versus working at Google and just talk a little bit more about that. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, I think the, the biggest thing that, um, that comes to mind um, 
I could probably share a few things, but uh, um, the, the first one that comes to mind is, you know, Amazon tries to be, they try to move fast. And I think actually you could probably make an argument that they do move faster than Google in, in, uh, in certain regard and certain things. Um, and the way they try to do that is in this two pizza team model and where they also try to, they try to have single threaded owners on projects and usually led by, you know, someone, it could be someone senior, uh, but like that kind of, um, that mode of thinking drives a lot of the way they do things and, and it helps them to move fast. So it's like, okay, I'm the single threaded owner for growing prime video. And this is what I'm going to focus on. And the two pizza team model is basically, Hey, your teams should make up, um, if you brought two pizzas into the room and you fed the, those two teams, like, so that's the idea of like each person gets two slices, um, and you would feed the, you would feed the team. So like roughly more or less, like that's the size of the teams that you have. So, so that's how they try to move fast. Whereas like Google, um, basically I think it tries to get everyone involved and it's kind of like, a it's kind of like community driven almost. So in like by consensus of like, this is what we should do. So it's a different approach where, you know, obviously both successful companies, um, but where you find the difference is that like, if you have everyone involved and everyone is like giving their opinion and like things are scrutinized and all the different teams are involved, um, then it takes a little bit longer to kind of surface up as far as like, what's the right decision to go to when we want to move forward. So, so that would be like the two, the, the differences I see between the two firms. Um, few other things real briefly is just like, you know, at Google, you're going to use a lot of the Google products <laughs> and uh, Amazon, you know, they don't have a Google workspace. So you're, you're probably going to use Microsoft's uh, work or something external um and yeah that's that's uh that's kind of like uh another and one one other thing i'll quickly share too is uh you know amazon actually focuses on a lot of doc writing right so everyone kind of knows uh this is out in the public that we don't really like amazon doesn't really do slides it's not kind of in their nature unless like you uh are presenting externally but typically you're writing like six page docs, four page docs, and Google is much less of a doc driven company and more of like a presentation and slides. So, so that also gives you a sense of like how things are done in like meeting wise and um, how you present your ideas. So hope that helps in uh, the differences. Yeah, I, I've definitely heard from some other Exponent students that working at Google, things do move slowly. Like there's very large community consensus driven debates, like you mentioned about even just changing like the color of an icon or something like that. Um, and yeah, I've, I've also heard that at Amazon, very, very writing heavy culture, right? Like there's meetings, you'll start like a 30 minute meeting and maybe just the first 15 minutes is just pure silence. So you're just reading a doc and then the second half of the meeting is just a discussion. Uh, but thanks, thanks for coming on and sharing these insights and for walking through that um, product strategy mock interview with us. Um, that concludes our video for the audience watching at home. Good luck with your upcoming PM interview. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons below to let us know that this video is valuable for you. And of course, check out hundreds more videos just like this at tryexponent.com. Thanks for watching and good luck on your upcoming interview.